have come to Seven Stains Trail Centre in Maybe to talk you through some of the physics involved in mountain biking. There's some really interesting physics principles uh, that hopefully are going to be useful for your GCSE or A-level physics, whichever one you're studying. Gorilla physics! Yeah. So I don't know if you ever wondered this, but why is it that the um, front cog at the front is the highest gear and the small cog at the back is the highest gear? Well again, it's a, it's a thing about levers, it's about force multipliers. So I hope you understand that the effort that you're doing is on the pedal. And that's a certain distance away from this centre point here. So that's the pivot, that's the effort. Now a moment is a force times a distance. So this is the force, this is the distance. The larger that is, the greater moment, the greater turning effect of the force. Now in mechanics, that's, that's often called torque. Okay, moment and torque are the same thing, force times the distance. So we've got a lot, nice large torque there. Now what we do with it depends on the cog that um, the chain is attached to. So we've got our effort here and our distance to the pivot. And that is the moment, that is the torque you're putting in. And what you do with it depends on what cog the chain is, is linked to. If it's on the smallest cog, then the ratio of um, effort distance to load distance is greatest. And that means that the force actually applied onto the chain is the largest. But I hope you understand, by turning around the smaller cog, you don't go as far. Now, on the larger cog, the ratio of effort to load is effort distance to load distance is lower. So therefore, it is harder for you to move on that pedal. But the chain does go a longer distance. So here at the back of the bike, we've got our force that we've put onto the chain. And depending on how far away from the, from the pivot it is, the greater the moment or the greater the torque, the greater the turning effect on the wheel. So actually this is why this is the lowest gear here. If we're thinking about making a turning effect, how much we're going to turn that wheel, in other words, a torque, then the larger the possible distance, the greater that turning effect, the greater the torque, the greater the moment. It's all three ways of saying the same thing. So I've got a force. Large distance means greater turning effect. Uh, that's why the l largest cog is the lowest gear. And here we've got the force, and here's where the, um, the distance from the pivot is smallest, therefore the least turning effect. But once again, if you think about how many chain loops are going around this um, here, then this is going to turn the, bi the bike wheel most here. So it's going to be easiest to turn the wheel at the top, hardest to turn the wheel at the bottom, but you're going to get more rotations per second out of this gear here, so that's the highest gear. The bikes have got a bit extra mud on them now after today. So the sun's come out again, well, visit Scotland every season in a day. Uh, <laughs> it's been a really good ride, but um, everything that could go wrong with the bike has gone wrong today, so that, that's been annoying, it's been the first of this kind of seasons rides. I hope you found the physics interesting. You've got to think, well, anything, there's a, everything you do has got to do with physics, hasn't it? Any mechanical engineering thing that you would do, any sports that you do, physics, the application of physics is applied to absolutely everything. And knowing how to use a, use a mountain bike, knowing how to design mountain bikes, comes down to these basic physics principles that you've been learning about at school. This video is part of a little mini-series of the physics of mountain biking, so if you like this video, then please check out the rest. And if you did like the video, then if I earned your subscription, please subscribe to Gorilla Physics. There'll be plenty more past papers help for your physics GCSEs and A-levels.